Well, I'm sure you're looking and thinking, what is Worsling up to now? Well, a very good friend of mine lives by the philosophy that dreams are free. When I was a little boy, I dreamt of catching a fish bigger than the boat I was actually fishing out of. Now, you may have seen, I've tried this before, and I learned a very valuable lesson. Do not stand up in an inflatable boat. It cost me several thousand dollars. I lost a rod and reel, I lost all my sound gear. But I've learned from that, and now I think I've got it right. What I've done, I've assembled this. Motor on the back, battery in there. I've even put a rod holder in the seat so I can hold my rod and reel. What I'm gonna do is try and hook a fish, a black marlin, off the banks at Jarvis Bay. We're gonna take this craft out there in that big boat. And then that big boat is never gonna be more than 20 metres from me, just for safety's sake. The other thing, I'm not gonna drive this boat around and try and hook the fish out of it. There could be 50 boats out there working a very small patch tomorrow, and it just wouldn't be safe. Not for me, not for them. So we'll try and get the bite on this boat, jump straight into this boat, and then we'll see how far we get towed. And if all goes well, we may catch a very big fish, hopefully big in this boat, out of this little rubber duck. I can't see how anything can go wrong. Let me just do a safety check. Oh, just perfect. One of the great tales of fishing is Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man of the Sea. Today, we're gonna to try and replicate that. And when I say we are, Greg, Bay and Basin Sport Fishing, you know what I've got in mind, don't you, mate? Oh, I do, mate, I'm a bit scared. It's a simple plan. We're gonna tow some baits behind the Stavy craft because we're gonna do that for safety reasons. We can all stay in here with the crew. The second one of these Chiagos goes, Arr! we're gonna jump ship into San Diego's little boat there. And we're gonna battle a marlin right down low, one on one, it's gonna be a lot of fun. What do you think I changed? It's going to be a huge amount of fun, every chance. Ooh, I'm really excited. Yeah. Hang on. No, I'm actually nervous. They're butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> Too quick towards him. Full stern. Yeah, I just don't want to get a slack line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full stern. Okay. Okay, slowly drive towards him. It's a nice, it's a black. Yeah. You jumped a bit. <laughs> Man, did this fish eat that bait? And I'm now thinking, what was I thinking? Because <laughs> I think we've hooked a black marlin, and I'm pretty sure Greg is bigger than the boat. It's bigger than the boat, mate. Just, uh, on. Head right. No, I want you to go straight for it. Going straight for it. That's it. It's going to come oh, up. It's going to come up. Here it comes. Here go, John. Out to the left. Stay away from that boat. Slowly forwards. Slowly forwards. I just can't believe the run this fish did. The first run was 200 metres and there's actually a seal on the bait as well. So the marlin 
has actually taken the bait out of the seal's mouth and the first jump was a cracker. Greg, I think it's a black. It appears to be, though. Eh? And a nice fish at that. And you know what? It's a totally different feeling being at water level with a massive game fish. I just wanted to jump around, do everything. This has always been an idea of mine to try and catch a fish bigger than the boat you're in. With a boat this small, Greg, I reckon we're always a chance, aren't we? We're always in with a chance, mate. <laughs> We've this, got him on the end of the line for now, anyway. The hours of waiting are all worthwhile when you get these opportunities. How deep are we? 68. A bit to right. the right. That's good. You want it right in front of you? Right in front, yeah. Right. What are you in now? Reverse. Slow. Yeah, it's good. Keeps that angle up. Yep. Gotta get this wind on back on. Forward. Wind on's on, keep coming forward. Forward. Forward, full ahead. I gotta say, Greg, this isn't the one I ordered. Probably about an 80, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon about 80 kilo yeah, black. Perfect, okay. So, you want me to just cut the hook when it comes up? No, we're gonna hang on as long as we can. And we'll try and grab by the bill, depending on how ugly it is. Well, you want a glove? I've got two gloves on at the moment. Yep. Got a marlin hooked up in the little boat. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to stress again. Do not try this at home. And more importantly, don't try it on the ocean. But I have a film crew there, a big boat, plenty of safety gear, and a few interested onlookers. We're not going to do anything silly here. We just want to see if you can catch a massive fish out of a very small boat. Neutral. You've heard of David and Goliath? This is water snake versus the marlin. Don't get in front of us, mate. That's all right. Okay, he's got back up a bit. Oh, no. He's out the front. He's going to jump. He's Reversing. Coming. He's 10 metres out the front there. Got him. This fish is taking line, and yet fish, big game fish are often fought from a chair, but not a chair that is just a wooden plank. <laughs> I'm just going to lean that there because I'm going to have a bit of a rest. And in case you're wondering, yes, my husband does fish. <laughs> That's taking line, mate. And I'm not his husband. <laughs> it's coming up, boys. It's going to jump. There we go. Look at that angle on the line. Keep going back a bit. Going back. Here he comes. What Greg's actually doing, he's using the water snake, he's backing up on this fish. And see how the angle of the line is coming up? Much easier to catch a big fish when he's on the surface than when he's out a million miles or straight down. Here he comes. He's just shot out to the left. He's gonna jump, boys, straight. There he is, oh! Big black! How big is that fish? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's a big black marlin. It's coming up. Here he comes. Here he comes. A bit out to the left. Here he comes. Oh! What a jump. That's amazing. He's not that far away. I can see the wind on leader. The wind on. That's so close. I can't believe I'm sitting in a little boat and you're fighting a marlin. <laughs> <laughs> if you only saw the look on my producer's face when I said. Let's try and catch a fish bigger than our boat. <laughs> oh. so, We're close, well, aren't this, we? The, the, this is going to be very interesting. It's going to be a while, and I want to make sure he's tired when he gets here, mate. Yes, yes. Uh, Just keep that nose pointing forward. Nose is forward. I think we're actually wearing him out because he's towing us. He is towing us now. I thought this would happen. I'm using a Chiagra 30 wide LRS. Spooled with 15 kilo line. I have a 200 pound wind on leader down to 130 pound gallus fluorocarbon leader. And of course, my favourite male hook in the whole world, an eagle claw circle. The fish, fish has gone straight down, because when a big fish is right under you and you've got no leverage at all, it is nearly impossible to get him up. Over the folks at home, they can hear how much line this fish has taken now. We had him just underneath the boat. And he's going straight for the bottom. We're in about 78 metres of water, weren't we? Yeah, we are. He was hooked in less than 50. As we were saying with the banks before, nice well, blue coral sea water coming and hitting the peak of the banks back here in about 16 metres. It's a series of lumps that, that come up really shallow. We're about eight miles offshore. 
and a few miles that way is the Continental Shelf. And in fact, Jervis Bay is one of the closest places along the Australian coastline to the Continental Shelf. And that's what makes uh, game fishing such a, a, a good opportunity in this part of the world. See the fish traps behind us here. We're Just out of here to the left, they've got an orange flag on it. And what we're hoping to do is steer the fish away, but we've probably got a fat chance of doing that. We can only really cross our fingers and hopefully it just keeps swimming past. Flat fish, Greg, just disappeared. And can you just explain to people at home what you did to help me out with this fight? Okay, with the little water snake here, we're actually just going in reverse, and that's actually keeping a little bit of tension on the line, but what you don't realise is we're actually being towed forward at the moment and, and maybe the guys on the boat can tell you actually how fast we're going. We'd be definitely going at a couple of knots. It's just a bit hard without a reference on the land behind us here now, but I can tell you now we are actually moving forward. In reverse? No, boat's going in reverse, boat's moving forward. So we're being towed for about a hundred kilo black marlin. <laughs> in a little rubber boat. Speaking of black. Eight miles offshore. Speaking of black, I have to have a serious word with Brian Black from Jarvis Walker who distributes water snake for them and he's the man. He said, Paul, that little engine will be just fine. What's all right for you to say, Brian? Look where I am right now. I'm just gonna let him tow us, mate. He's taken line and he's towing, it's gonna tire him. Are you uh, in reverse still? I'm in reverse. Okay. I'm oh, gonna have a little rest. Oh, full of stern, sir. Just a little rest. According to IGFA regulations, this is illegal resting your rod. But then again, I've never seen a rubber boat in one of those either. So I think we'll just go with the flow, eh, Greg? Give me the biggest, heaviest tackle. We can get this boat in, fish into the boat as soon as possible. Having said that, we're actually, in terms of marlin fishing, we're fishing very light. I think Paul just explained the gear before, but we only have a 130 pound leader here. And actually speaking to crews yesterday, they're fishing even as, as light as 100 pound for these relatively small billfish. Small would be twice the length of the boat, do we? Yep. Okay, now up over here's a couple of fish traps. Yesterday afternoon we actually were drifting back from them. We caught a few mahi-mahi or dolphin fish underneath these fish traps. There's an orange boy way over there in the distance. So at this point in time our real concern is, is that the fish doesn't swim anywhere near the fish tra trap because there's a big trap on the bottom, there's a rope going up to the surface and a series of floats and we don't want this fish to get caught around that line. This is a true battle between man and fish. Well, maybe a grown-up boy anyway. And I cannot tell you how much I'm sweating, how much my biceps are aching, and my lumbar region of the back, Greg, it ain't doing so hot either. Oh, a bit of a rub from a good friend. Sure, mate, go. Oh, nice. Come on. But, in fishing, once you've done a few things, or even if you've never fished, so important to set yourself a challenge and try and do it, because if you achieve it, it could be that thing that you never ever forget and you're still talking about when you're 95 in the nursing home trying to chat up Beryl next door. I think Beryl would think this is pretty impressive, wouldn't she? Okay, we're eight miles off Jarvis Bay in the water snake and we're hooked up to a 100 kilo black marlin. More to come soon, you beauty! Oh, let him go! Here he comes! Oh! What a job, that's amazing. We've been hooked up to a black marlin of about 100 kilos for half an hour. We've got some beautiful jumps. We've had him at the boat, but he's just sounded and taken 80 metres of line and broken my heart. I think we're going to be here for a long time. Righto, this is it, folks. We've got wind on. It's just below the boat again here now. Just hit two hours, and this is a big fish, much bigger than we first anticipated. We've had it to the boat four times, and now it's gone again, but we're still giving it a crack. We'll just see how the fish plays up, whether it comes up really tired next to the boat, we can grab it by the bill, or whether we can grab the wind on leader, we don't know yet. Just inch by inch. 
It's a little boyhood thing. We're out here in a little boat on the big sea and we're catching a big fish. Okay, here comes the plat through the guide. You can't see the top of the rod at the moment. It's just down in the swell. There it comes and then a little wind again. You can see he's brought the rod up off, off, off the side of the boat here. We're actually just trying to lift and just give it a little bit now. Will this be the one? Will we hang on for another two hours? These fish are known, fights on these fish are known to go on for over four hours. You got a, you got a good look at him there, mate? Yep. But I can see that fish again. It's a magnificent beast. Okay, here we go. Full colour. You're going good, mate. You're going good. This is a magnificent fish. Oh, look at that thing. Look at that. My gosh. Oh, Paulie! Paulie! Look at that! Go on, Christ. Try and grab that leader. Okay. Okay, Paulie. Paulie, we got a marlin next to the boat, mate. Is that drag off? Yep. That drag is off. Yep. You hold uh, it, I've got a glove. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Dad, come here, my friend. Is one very big fish. Down this way, mate. Huh. Grab him on the bill. Got him. Got him. Oh, my God. Kick the motor in gear. Kick the motor in gear. How's the size of that? That is a beast of a black barn. Uh, what an incredible experience, this fish. He's bigger than our boat. <laughs> yeah, buddy! Yeah. That's 150 yeah. kilos of black marlin. Yeah. In 2.7 metres of boat, Ernest Hemingway, old man this sea, <laughs> it's a hard out! <laughs> Just going to cut that leader and let the fish go. As close as we can, it'll be fine. It's an eagle claw hook, it'll rust out in a matter of days. So you can see this here now, right at the fish's mouth. Absolutely no worries about that. Stay there, that's all right. Okay, that's it. It's officially big in the boat. The Pyra Indic a black mile, and away you go, darling. Here she goes, look, under the camera boat, and gone. And I'm gonna say, that is a beautiful thing. Hi to my crew, and thanks for your help, boys! <laughs> <laughs> nice, mate, nice.